We are quickly approaching the midnight hour of Thursday morning, August 9th, 2012, and there is a lot to talk about in the tropics, so we're going to get right on into it with the latest on Ernesto. As you can see, Ernesto is still partially inland, with the center of circulation trying to make it into the extreme southern Bay of Campeche. So due to a lot of land interaction, it's very questionable as to whether or not Ernesto will ever attain hurricane status once again. So therefore, the main concern as the second landfall becomes imminent will be the risk of heavy rainfall and flooding, especially in the mountains where the orographic lifting will enhance those precipitation totals. Elsewhere in the Gulf Caribbean and West Atlantic, there is a lot of shower activity across Hispaniola, but a lot of this is related to a mid to upper level trough. You can see this on the water vapor, and in fact this upper level low was partly the reason why the upper level ridging is so strong out across Central America, and Ernesto would have become a major hurricane if it wasn't for all of the land interaction, so thankfully it moved inland before having the chance to do so. Looking forward now, the Hurricane Center is monitoring the remnants of Tropical Storm Florence, and although convection is redeveloping, the upper level environment out across the West Atlantic is not favorable, so you can anticipate nothing more than some increased shower activity near Bermuda. But the more pressing concern is Invest 92L. This is a tropical disturbance located to the west of the Cape Verde Islands, and due to the improving structure of this disturbance over the past 24 hours, the Hurricane Center has issued a special tropical weather outlook, increasing the chances of this system becoming a tropical depression within the next two days to 70 percent. You can see why as the convection is developing closer to what appears to be a well-defined low-level surface circulation and on the enhanced infrared you can see the shower activity starting to increase despite the fact that we have a lot of significantly dry air in the mid to upper levels and a lot of this dry air is associated with the Saharan air layer so this is going to place at least somewhat of a lid on development and if this system were to become a tropical depression or tropical storm, it likely wouldn't become anything too significant before reaching the Lesser Antilles. We also see the low-level vorticity on the increase, and in terms of the westerly vertical wind shear, it's really not all that hostile at the moment, as we do have upper-level ridging spreading westward from the East Atlantic, so those wind shear values are generally lower than 20 to 25 knots. The low-level steering would currently suggest that this tropical wave should continue moving westward, much like Ernesto when it was out in the Central Atlantic. And that's what two-thirds of the reliable models are indicating. However, the ECMWF is suggesting a more northerly track, and that is partly in response to a stronger system that is forecast to exit Africa within the next two days. What is this tropical wave that I speak of? Well, here is a good look at it. This is a three-day running infrared animation of the western half of the African continent and you can see this very powerful tropical wave even when it was near central Africa looking very robust and the GFS was picking up on this several days ago so that's a good verification by that model and here it is at the end of the run about to exit the coast and move into the Atlantic Ocean. Looking ahead over the next six to seven days beginning with the CMC model we see that first off it's trying to develop a spoke of the monsoon energy and bring it into the eastern gulf and then develop it into a tropical cyclone before moving into the Florida Panhandle. This is being considered a very suspect solution as it does not have any support from the GFS or the ECMWF, nor do we see any sign of this occurring on satellite imagery, so you do not have to worry about any development in the Gulf from what we can see over the next week or so. Now as we take a more in-depth look at what is progged for the tropical systems in the Atlantic, here comes 92L Invest continuing to move westward and it's going to have a difficult trip out ahead of it for the next few days due to the vertical wind shear that we are soon going to see in the model not to mention the dry air that is already present but if it can survive the trip and eventually move on into the West Caribbean for all we know conditions could become a little bit more favorable in the medium range and that is what we witnessed with Ernesto. Up next is the latest vertical wind shear forecast from the CMC and as we said, the upper level shear is not too terrible right now across the Central Atlantic, but a lot of the models are in agreement that this upper level low is going to dive more toward the south. So within the next 72 to 96 hours, we're going to see a lot of southwest vertical wind shear very close to the Lesser Antilles. So even if development were to occur within the next 24 hours, it may have a hard time maintaining itself as it inches closer toward the East Caribbean. So far, this is good news for interest in the East Caribbean because we can easily handle a weak tropical depression, tropical storm, or even better, nothing more than a tropical wave axis. 
So we're going to have to see how this system holds up. And if we go ahead and believe the latest forecast from the CMC, it's going to be moving near Jamaica by day six, where conditions could be a little bit better. As we switch over to the 18Z run of the GFS, I would also like you to notice that the models are not very aggressive with the African wave. And that is because the African wave is exiting at such a high latitude that it's going to place itself under or over marginally favorable water temperatures. They are a little bit cooler that far toward the north. And also a more northerly system is going to be more prone to getting picked up by troughs. So the odds are stacked against this system ever becoming a major threat to the United States but we will keep a close watch on it. And in terms of 92L Invest, it is in agreement with the CMC that it's going to come across and move into the Central and West Caribbean. So this is going to be a player that we will be monitoring for at least another week. And finally, we can't have tropical analysis without at least some model disagreement. So I will introduce you to the latest 12Z run from the ECMWF. And over the next 24, 48, and 72 hours, things look fairly similar so far to the other models with 92L trying to organize, and we've got the system near Africa now fully off the coast. However, the disagreement begins to show up near day five and day six. Obviously, the European is a little bit more aggressive with the African wave, and therefore, there is a little bit more in the way of interaction between the two tropical systems, and that is going to help pull 92 to the north of the Caribbean in this particular run. As of right now, I'm not too keen on this current track, I am more willing to believe the latest CMC and GFS solution, but you cannot ignore the European model as it is one of the better models. So we will be closely watching the latest guidance that comes out over the next 24 hours, and hopefully there will be some better agreement. But as of right now, if we had to take a stab at one of the more likely tracks, it would be more toward the West Caribbean. And last but not least, we can anticipate more activity overall in the Atlantic Basin over the next two to three weeks as the MJO is moving from Octan 8 into octants one, two, and possibly three, and all three of these are very favorable for enhanced Atlantic activity. So 92L Invest looks more than enthused to replace Ernesto as Ernesto begins to move out of the picture, and this will be the main focus here at 28storms.com and the Hurricane Tracker app over the coming days.